It's Amanchu. Welcome to Minecraft Bedrock vs. Java, where I play through both versions of the game and compare them. I am back, finally, for playing Minecraft in the 1.19 Wild Update. It is here, at last. And last time I did a little preparation for the Wild Update by making a nether hub, and it is now finished. I finished the nether hub in the job world and the bedrock world. And after I was done with that, I went on to plant a whole large field of wheat. Wheat isn't something that I really needed, so I haven't grown a lot of it. Now with this new update, I need a lot of wheat. And the reason I need wheat is because of the thing I want to talk about today that was added with a wild update that I don't think gets the attention that it deserves, and that's mud. Mud is a new block that was added in the wild update, and it has some fascinating properties. If I walk on mud, I sink down into it like a couple of pixels. Mud is slightly shorter than a full block in height, so if I pile up a bunch of gravel on it and break the bottom one, the gravel falling on the mud blocks breaks because it's not falling onto a full block. In addition, if you place a hopper underneath mud, the hopper can pick up items through the mud block because it's slightly less than a full block in height. That is in Java Edition. That doesn't work that way in Bedrock Edition because in Java Edition, a hopper can pick up items from up to one block above it. In Bedrock Edition, it's up to three quarters of a block above the hopper. So that means you can pick up items through a slab into a hopper, but you can't pick up items from something that's slightly less than a full block in height like you can in Java Edition. Another interesting property of mud that I don't think many people have mentioned, if you place mud on top of blocks that have pointed dripstone underneath them, the mud will eventually turn into clay. And that means that clay is now a renewable resource. Now technically clay already is a renewable resource in Java Edition because a mason villager will throw blocks of clay at you as gifts if you have the hero of the village effect. But that's not exactly an efficient way to produce clay renewably. But this kind of is a way that you can, you see it's already happened. It's turned that mud into clay. So this is a way that you can produce clay renewably. And I know that that's not a huge deal for the most part, but is for me, as a big fan of Skyblock, Anytime you can get a resource that's able to be produced renewably is a really cool thing. And speaking of producing things renewably, mud certainly is going to be very common in a mangrove swamp. You can find huge amounts of it there, but you can also make mud. If you take uh, dirt or coarse dirt and rude dirt and use a bottle of water on it, it converts the dirt to mud. And since dirt is a renewable resource, that makes mud a renewable resource as well. But obviously, this isn't exactly an efficient way to do it. And I came up with a way to automatically turn dirt into mud. And I have this set up over here. And what this does is I have a dispenser here full of water bottles. It's fed from this double chest full of water bottles. And every time I place a dirt block in front of this dispenser, it turns into mud, and then that piston pushes it out of the way. So I can just keep producing mud from dirt. And I can do about, oh, a stack of this at a time before I have to refill the double chest. So this is a pretty effective way to produce it. And I'm in my bedrock world here, so I know that it works in bedrock edition. I haven't yet tested this build in Java edition. I'm gonna go over into my Java world now and build this thing and explain how it works while I'm building it. It should work the same way in both versions. It should. I guess I'll find out. And in fact, I think there's an improvement that I can make on this design that will work in both versions. Oh yeah, another important property of mud I forgot to mention. This is kind of cool too. I can combine mud with wheat, which is why I need all that wheat, and create packed mud. Pack mud is a block that you use a pick to mine it rather than a shovel. You can, in a crafting table, turn pack mud into pack mud bricks. And then from that, you can craft 
in the crafting table or in the stone cutter. Pack mud grid slabs and stairs and walls, which had some extra cool looking blocks and believe you me, I intend to make use of these blocks in some builds in the near future. Wow, it's been like maybe 10 minutes and all of this mud except for a couple blocks, most of this mud has been converted to clay already. That's really cool. All right, let me hop over to my Java Edition world and I will actually build this setup and show you how it works. And there might be an additional improvement I can make on this design to make it even better. Actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. I changed my mind. Uh, I said I was gonna go over to Java Edition and build it and show you how I did it there. But it turns out it doesn't work the same way in Java Edition. Big surprise, a redstone build including pistons doesn't work the same way. So let me just describe how this one works in Bedrock Edition. Then I could go over to build the build in Java Edition and show you what I had to do differently in that version to get the same design to work. Here I have an item sorter. It's a pretty standard design sorter that feeds items into this chest. Um, I made this many times before, but I think it's worth explaining again how this works. The bottom hopper here is being powered by this redstone torch. That locks that hopper. That means that this hopper cannot pull items from the hopper above it, and it cannot push items into the chest. It's locked. The top hopper, you can see it's feeding over to the right where there's nothing there. That means that it can pull items from the dispenser above it, but it can't push items anywhere. And what's in this top hopper is glass bottles. That's what I want to filter out from the dispenser. And some other stackable items, one in each slot. Um, I like to use sticks, and I think it's generally a good idea to rename those sticks in an anvil so there's something completely unique. Not just any stick will um, be able to be fed into this hopper, only other sticks labeled with a subliminal message on them. So that means the only thing really that the top hopper is going to be able to pull into it is glass bottles. There is a comparator here that is putting out a redstone signal of a strength proportional to how full this top hopper is. So as more glass bottles get pulled into this top hopper, eventually this comparator puts out a signal strong enough to power this block, causing this repeater to turn on, which powers that block, and since the redstone torch is sitting on that block, the redstone torch turns off, because if it's on and blocked is powered, it's off. That unlocks this hopper on the bottom, causing it to start pulling items out of the top hopper, starting with items in the leftmost slot first. So it's gonna pull out glass bottles until the top hopper is no longer full enough for the comparator to put out a signal strong enough to cause this redstone torch to turn off. The redstone torch turns back on, relocking the hopper. That's how the item filter works. And I'm using that so that whenever I put a block of dirt in front of this dispenser, and the dispenser activates, it's going to use a water bottle and then be left with an empty glass bottle in the uh, dispenser, and that'll immediately get pulled out to make more room for these glass bottles up here in this chest to get fed down in the dispenser. Now, the way this dispenser is getting powered is I have a piece of redstone dust here, and I have a lever here which is powering that redstone dust. If I put a dirt block in front of this dispenser, that dirt block will be powered by the redstone dust and the powered dirt block next to the dispenser causes the dispenser to activate. When the dispenser activates, that's detected by this observer which is facing into the dispenser. That sends a redstone signal to the blocks behind it and then across this redstone to activate this piston and that piston will push the dirt block, which has become a mud block, out of the way. Just like that. If I did nothing else with this, I'd only be able to produce like 13 mud blocks before there'd be too many mud blocks in a row for this piston to continue to push. So what I do is I have a row of pistons here facing toward where the mud blocks will be. And then I have a redstone torch here. Once the column of mud blocks gets as far as this piston here, 
the last mud block in the roll will get powered by that redstone torch. And that causes power to go through all of this redstone in this chain, activating all of the pistons in the row here. Um, you could, in Bedrock Edition, put just put the redstone dust right across the top of the pistons. That will work. I don't think that works in Java Edition, uh, but doing it this way will work in either version. So that once you get that row of blocks gets as far as this spot, you can see the whole row gets pushed out of the way. So now I can keep generating mud blocks. And that's how it works. And I can just place, in this case I'm using coarse dirt. You could use dirt or rooted dirt, whatever. And this will be able to keep going until I run out of water bottles, which is about a stack worth of dirt. And there I am now out of water bottles. So it's continued to pushing these things out, but it's not making mud anymore because I ran out of water bottles. I just recently discovered on a discard channel, somebody put up a video. Actually, I put a link in this video to that video that the guy made. Uh, it's somebody called Pips Realms that has a better system than this that will allow me to continue to feed more water bottles into this dispenser for much, much longer. So now I have a sticky piston facing up here and then redstone dust going around here so that when I place a dirt block in front of this dispenser, it activates both of these pistons. On top of the sticky piston, I put an observer facing this way. And then a dispenser facing toward me here. Just put a temporary block here and then glass all around it. water inside there. Okay. Let's see if I can get a good vantage point of this. So the way this works is this dispenser full of empty bottles. Actually, one more thing I should do. I don't know how important this will be, but let's cover that up. This dispenser is full of empty bottles. Each time that it's activated, it's going to fill one of those bottles with water and get a water bottle and the water bottle won't have room inside this dispenser to fit so it'll just spit out the water bottle into this space which will get picked up by the hopper and fed down into this dispenser. Everything down here works the same as normal. When I place a dirt block in front of this piston in the dispenser, the dispenser activates, the observer detects that and that's going to activate this piston and this sticky piston pushing up this observer and when the observer goes back down again, it's pulled back down again by the sticky piston, it will activate and send a pulse to this dispenser, causing it to fill another water bottle, which will feed back down into this dispenser. So it's going to be continually fed by water bottles from here, which means I can make many more stacks at once without having to reset anything. So now I can just continually feed dirt blocks in front of here, Eventually, this row of pistons here will have 12 blocks of mud blocks in front of them, and they won't be able to push anymore. But I'll be able to get through maybe about two and a half stacks of mud before I have to dig that all up to reset things. All right, that's it. <laughs> that's all I can make in one go before I have to dig them up and start resetting things. I got things started, I <laughs> got a lot more to go, but at least now I have a use for all that gravel I was getting for the gold farm. This is how it works in Bedrock Edition and it's a design I'm pretty happy with. You know, thanks in part to uh, Pips Realms for coming up with a solution that allows me to avoid having to fill many, many water bottles and reset the uh, machine after each stack. This is a lot quicker. So now, I'll go over and show you what I did in Java Edition and how I made this farm, this same farm, same kind of principle, but there's a few differences, a few things I had to do differently. Okay, now I'm here in my Java Edition world and I'll show you what I had to do. It's a little different. 
The issue is that the timing of how pistons fire is different between Bedrock and Java. So it's not surprising that any kind of redstone build that uses pistons is going to require a little bit different setup. So this filter is the same. The item filter, that part is the same. One issue is with this row of pistons. If I put a mud block right here, all of the pistons weren't firing. It was only f activating this end pistons. The other ones weren't activating. So I had to put this repeater in here to put a delay in the signal so that it would hold that redstone signal long enough for all of the pistons in the row to fire. In Bedrock Edition, I didn't need that repeater there. It would work without it. Um, an interesting quirk of the observer is it was detecting when this dispenser was powered and then when it was unpowered. So that would send two pulses and activate this piston twice and activate this piston twice. And I was getting two water bottles from this dispenser every time I put one dirt block in front of this. That was problematic. So I added this series of repeaters here. This, what this does, I have a repeater on one tick here, a repeater on two ticks here, and then another repeater here. And that means that each of those pistons only will fire once, even though the observer here is gonna activate twice. Uh, another issue, it's kind of a weird quirk of Java Edition. This sticky piston here doesn't pull the observer back every time, which is weird. It still weirdly works though. So if I put a dirt block here, you see that it didn't move back, but that's okay because when the observer moved and it sent a redstone pulse out behind it, because of quasi conductivity, this dispenser still activated from that observer being moved. And then it activates when the observers move back again. It, it's kind of a weird quirk of Java Edition that, that the sticky piston doesn't pull the observer back, but it doesn't matter because of quasi conductivity. Each time the observer is moved, it activates the dispenser anyway. So the setup's a bit different, but this does work this way. This was a design I was so certain it would work the same in both versions. It totally doesn't. It's redstone, it's pistons. Why did I think it would work the same? Still shout out to Pips Realms for coming up with the idea of this dispenser with an observer activating it so that you know you don't have to keep filling up water bottles and putting it into the double chest. This is a better idea. It works a lot better. It just, it took a little bit of effort for me to get this design overall to work in Java Edition. As soon as I manage to find my way to a mangrove swamp, I'll be able to collect as much mud as I could possibly use. But for now, it's kind of nice that I actually finally have a use for all that gravel that I got from bartering with piglins plus a little bit of dirt that I have from terraforming. All right, now that I have this setup done and I'm pretty happy with it, uh, I do want to at least attempt to go into some new unrendered chunks. I, I'm probably not gonna have time to do any real exploring, but I just wanna see how lucky I do get with it. Like I said, in the last video, I made a nether hub in uh, the Bedrock world and the Java world. And in both worlds, it leads out a thousand blocks to the north in the nether. And that equates to 8,000 blocks north in the overworld. And that is plenty far enough to get into new chunks I haven't been to before. You can see on the map here what I've explored in Java Edition. I didn't show this in the last video. I just showed the Bedrock Edition what I explored. Pretty far to the south. Where am I here? This is my base right here. And so I've explored a little ways to the north. By the way, these are uh, 1024 by 1024 block maps. So they're not the largest scale, uh, but it's a thousand blocks per map. Uh, I've explored a little ways to the north, but certainly not 8,000 blocks. That's definitely gonna be an unrendered terrain. I've explored really far to the west in Java Edition. That's when I went to find the Woodland Mansion that was in Java Edition. And a significant distance to the south, but not that far to the north, not that far to the east. So let's head into the nether, and I'll show you what my completed hub looks like. And here we are. So it would probably help if I had a boat. 
So I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this has come out. Over here is the gold farm. I didn't want to actually complete this with an ice boat road or anything, but I, I needed to have some way to signify that, yeah, this is the path to the gold farm. You can see the scaffolding that leads up to where it is, way up there. That's not completely enclosed, but it's, uh, I think, good enough. There's a path through the bedrock that leads down to the regular nether. This path is now complete, and it leads to world spawn, my blaze farm in the nether fortress, and this signifies the general mob farm. That's where I got all the bones from. So world spawn over here. And this leads to the fortress where the blaze farm is. There's a little path down there. back down this way. Here's my mob farm. This took me a lot of time to put together, but I think in the long run it will be worth it. Now over this way, this obviously leads to the stronghold, thus all the end stone. And if I keep going past the route to the stronghold, I get into this area, which Yes, it's unfinished. It's unfinished for a reason. This is leading a thousand blocks to the north. And I should be able to cover the distance in like less than 30 seconds. I want to make the walls out of wild update type blocks. So now I can just build a portal. Let's see. Yeah, I'm a thousand blocks out. It doesn't have to look fancy. Once I... Uh, get some more blocks from the wild update I will decorate this a lot nicer okay it's done I think I'm ready to go explore the new terrain it looks like unfortunately I've ended up in a cave this might indicate that I'm under an ocean which is less than ideal, because while, well, let's see, what level I'm at here? I'm at Y14. While eventually I am going to want to explore the deep dark, which is going to be way down deep in caves, I don't really want to explore that right now. <laughs> not, not interested. Hang on, let me check something real quick. Get out a map. Oh yeah, I can see above me is nothing but ocean. Yeah. I'm I'm underneath an ocean. Hmm. Well, this is kind of unfortunate, but I think I'm going to leave it here. <laughs> kind of on a um, cliffhanger, if you will. I do want to explore this area, see if I can find some new wild update biomes and see what kind of interesting things I can find in them, but I will take care of that next time. If you made it this far in this video, you probably like what you saw, so click on the like button. And if you want to see my exploration of new chunks with wild update terrain, subscribe to the channel. And you'll see what I do next time on Amon Chooses Minecraft Java vs. Bedrock.